Anyway, we need to obviously get back into the Ye stuff. Um, Ye jumped on with an interview with Piers Morgan, somebody that I can't absolutely stand. Uh, and I think most people are the same, but he does have good interviews in general. So I'm a big fan of his in that regard because he's able to get some good guests but as a person he's a flipping wallad but Ye sat down with him for a pretty epic interview that's due to come out in full tomorrow I guess later today but this is a five minute teaser of the interview with Piers Morgan and Kanye West or Ye formerly known as Kanye West on um what's, what's Piers Morgan show called Piers Morgan Uncensored so that's the title of the show if you want to check out the whole thing yourself but I'm going to play it pause it play it pause it as I usually do so don't get too angry at me please 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 don't get too angry at me. Let's bring this down a little bit. Should I bring it down? Yeah, there. let's play it. You don't hold accountability to my pain. You're being a Karen. I'm talking you about. I'm talking. I'm not a Karen. To the I'm, pain. I'm not a Karen, and I'm not going to cancel you, and I'm not going to uncensor you. I'm simply going to challenge you on what you're saying. You can, you can, I think you, you don't understand me. the pain that you've been causing with some of these comments. And I think that one in particular, I can understand. Oh my God, God forbid, God forbid one comment could cause people to feel any of the pain that my people have went through for years. Even like the blacks being ushered to the left during the civil rights movement. Wh no why, one has cared why does about he, black why does people. He, okay, why no, does, no, all right. no one is. Can I, I mean, say, I agree that the racism against black people has been utterly deplorable, shameful, unacceptable, and thank God the world is beginning to move to a better place about the way what, what about, it has treated okay. black what people about, like you. What, however, however, it's, one form of racism here no, doesn't no, justify... No, it's almost in a better place. Well, one see, form of racism doesn't justify another. It's not a better place. I'm not cutting you off. I'm finishing my sentence so you can respond. One it's form not, of racism... It's not, it's one not form racism. of racism... It is racism when you say I'm going deaf so for Jewish truth. people. I was in a position... These interviews are terrible anyway, especially when they don't have a satellite link because there's a little delay in it and you're kind of shouting at a laptop and whatnot. So it's very difficult to get it done. Anybody that's been on a phone call with a tele-sales agent or if you're calling somebody from a shipping you know, place like a USPS or a DHL or you're calling your bank or whatever else, you know how difficult it is to kind of you know, have a conversation because that person is basically going through a script and you're trying to share their, share your pain and frustration and get them to care about your issues. And you can have this weird communication thing where you can kind of say a word, they say a word and you kind of cut each other off. But in this regard, because the topics are so sensitive and so triggering and they've both walked into this interview with their own preconceived notions, it makes the flipping whole thing even worse, even worse. Where I've been hurt, and this is the way I had the right to express myself. The point of this interview is for you to question me and then for me to answer and say, okay, even though the same rules are not applied to my people, if a person with a gun or drugs is pulled over and has four, three other people in the car, they're all going to jail. I'm not going to apply that to Jewish people for the sake of this conversation. Isn't that what you wanted? But you know what you did? You tried to civil rights me. You tried to pull me back to a week ago. But we're here today. There's been plenty of converse, conversations and commentary since that. But you want me to go back to 1960. No, no, no. Here's you what want I me to go no, back no. to seven days. He's an amazing dude, right? He says what he says. Then he's allowed to get over it. Do you know what I mean? That, that's what he's basically saying. He's basically saying... I've moved past it. I'm done now. Why are you still talking about what I spoke about a week ago? But it's like, no, no, no. What you spoke about a week ago was very hurtful. People are still hurt right now. So we have a right to speak about it. And now we have you in front of us. We want to speak about it to you now. You don't, if you don't speak about it, cool, but you don't get to control what we speak about. Like very strange you know, how he goes about doing stuff. Like once he's over something, he's over it. But when it's the most important thing in the world, you have to pay attention to him and drop everything and help him. <laughs> if anything, he's the Karen, really, in, in this regard. All right, let me jump in. Here's what I want you to do. I want you to reflect. Okay, so have we grown? I... Have, we, have, we, have we grown? Here's how we have grow. We grown? Yeah, here's how we grow. I want you to reflect. No, have we grown? I'm about have to... we grown? I'm about... This is probably one of the worst duos you could ever put together for an interview, right, in terms of their personality. Because I forgot, Piers Morgan does interrupt a lot. He does interrupt a lot. But Kanye also loves the sound of his own voice as much as I do, right? I love the sound of my own voice, clearly. 
I've got 600 plus episodes of a podcast where I basically speak to myself. And obviously the streams are another, another avenue. But Kanye, like, I don't, I don't have this delusion of grandeur that I'm fucking Jordan Peterson or some shit. I'm just talking nonsense, right? And just trying to fill time and talk about things I'm interested in. But Kanye legitimately thinks everything he's saying is really kind of, you know, um, grounded in fact and there's going to be things that are going to change the world and make things different and make people open their eyes and whatnot he doesn't he can't picture in his head that maybe he's saying something redacted it can't be redacted to him it's impossible i'm Kanye. how can i say redacted things but then you're also talking to flipping you know piers morgan it, it makes up that quote and it was that um a strong ob- was that something meets an immovable objects or something this is what that kind of looks like because these guys are going to interrupt each other all the way to the end you're not in charge of my growth. You're not in charge of I'm my about growth, to su- Okay, let me, let me phrase grow. it like this. I'm about to suggest to you how you may grow if you choose to grow this way. And you, can, you can ignore no, me. Pierce, you can ignore Pierce, me. Pierce, 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 how much money are you worth? <laughs> not as much as you, sadly. <laughs> exactly. So take my advice. Maybe you'll get richer. I would love to take... That is such an obnoxious, cunty thing to say. That's, that's something Trump would say, right? I've got more money than you. You have less money than me. I can't listen to you. What a weird thing to do and say to somebody, right? So essentially, he can't listen to any of his friends because, yeah, or he can't listen to anyone. Didn't he say recently when you're standing outside that TMZ car that he's the richest black man in history or something, which, you know, who knows if it's true or if it isn't. I'm not going to bother researching it and kind of debunking it, but it sounds like fucking, you know, like uh, like nonsense, right? It, it, it sounds like a Brendan Shaw fact. But he's out here saying, yeah, I am the richest black man in the world. Okay, let's take that on face value. You are the richest black man in the world. Then who can speak to you then if you're the richest black man in the world? Because you've got more money than anyone. So the only people he can speak to, you know what's funny? Hear this out. He's the richest black man in history, according to Kanye, according to Ye. If you don't have more money than him, you can't give him advice. But then he's attacking all the Jews. And the Jews have a lot of money. So technically, the only people that can speak to him are the whites, who he hates, and the Jews, who he hates. <laughs> Isn't that hilarious? The pe- Korean people that he hates are the only ones that can speak to him because they might have the fortune and the wealth and the riches to maybe compete with what he has. What an absolute diabolical situation. But yeah, he comes off like a proper cunt, man. Like, he comes off like a proper cunt. And the thing that I, it kind of always blows my mind about is because, again, I'm a huge Kanye fan. I love the shoes. I don't have them here to show you, but I've got the shoes, I've got the clothes, I listen to the music and all that malarkey, right? And I love him as general. And in general, because I listen to so many different musical genres and whatnot, being a DJ and also being somebody that loves music, I think because of that, I'm lucky enough that I like a lot of artists who I pretty who are pretty diabolical as human beings right one of them being morrissey right from the band formerly known as fucking dismiss he does his own thing now he's a pretty reprehensible person he's hard to like but he makes good music so i think from when i was young i was able to always separate art and artists because i like really kind of hard to love artists in general but i think with kanye especially with the hip-hop community he might be one of the worst culprits he might be one of the worst culprits he might be one of the worst corporates because he is intentionally <laughs> trying to be a piece of shit. Whereas I feel like Morrissey and all those kind of people are just, you know, that's just who they are. What's just who they are? I don't think they're trying to purposely piss anyone off, but I get the feeling that he is because he's doing all these kind of greatest hits of like p- pissing people off. George Floyd died with fentanyl. Um, what do you say? Um, slavery was a choice. Uh, the Jews are running the world and they're evil. Like he's got all these kind of, you know, fucking topics that he's throwing out these subjects that would essentially alienate 50 percent of his fucking fan base immediately do you know what i mean you talk about plant parenthood and abortions and all that stuff and being pro-choice these are things that are going to get you kind of you know get you clicks but also going to divide opinion so <laughs> i love seeing it because he's clearly wanting to wind people up man he really does but you gotta love it your business advice. Why would I listen to you? I, well, why don't you, why don't you hear what my advice is and then work out if I'm wrong? Can we do that deal? Well, the thing is, you, you haven't given me any credit or a moment of reflection for the comparison that I made, the brilliant, if I do say so myself, comparison that I made to the cops pulling over one black person and locking I everyone understand up what you're and saying. my tweet having issues. I, wait a second, I wasn't done with the sentence. La la la, uh, of my tweet. <laughs> from- 
<laughs> this man's nearly 50 years old with four children, an ex-wife and a bevy full of ex-girlfriends. And he's la 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 people in fucking real time because they're over they're over talking or they're in or they're dare to interrupt him or they're interjecting and making a point he is saying la 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 like a five-year-old do you know how incredible that is do you know how incredible that is he's redefining what it is to be a fucking billionaire he's redefining what it is to be a mogul because usually when you associate moguls and billionaires you really kind of uh, associate them with being kind of well put together well-mannered genteel but really stern and kind of serious people right but you don't really describe them as people that would go around on a fucking bigotry tour la 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 ling fucking interviewers demanding that they speak uninterrupted for an unspecified period of time on tv <laughs> you don't expect that do you <laughs> i love him though man he's fucking pure chaos and then he's got this fucking stupid hat on because he wants to run for pres for president in 2024 who's gonna vote for him here on the fucking chat if he does actually run so imagine on a ticket you've got him v ron DeSantis. who are you picking ron DeSantis or this guy ron DeSantis or this guy <laughs> who are you picking you picking kanye and he says, if you pick him, you'll get free clothes. Or you, every, everyone that votes for Kanye gets... Can you do that? Can you do that? I think that's illegal, right? Can you do that in part of like... like you, know, you know in Trump when he was running, could he have said if you vote for Trump that you get like a free MAGA hat? Or is that, is that something that's illegal? I'm assuming that's illegal. That would be like vote of fraud or... Malib I don't know. It's something, right? I'm sure it's not legal. <laughs> <laughs> honestly if any of you guys vote for him you deserve whatever country you end up with i swear to god you deserve whatever is oh my god's hilarious <laughs> robert i'll sit in my garage with a car running while i decide <laughs> if you guys vote for him you deserve any flipping any 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 thing you get in life but yeah Big up Kanye for patting himself on the back for making a good point. The same point that everyone was making, by the way, because he's saying he's made this point now. No, everyone was saying to him, you can't fucking categorize all Jews because you've, you've had bad business with some Jews in the music industry. Those are not all Jews. He thinks fucking all Jews are fucking, you know, a monolith and they go around and, you know, fucking trying to rip everybody off that they can find. Oh. <laughs> Referring to all Jewish people, I said, for the sake of this conversation, I will refer to the business people who have destroyed me and my people and my fellow creatives. But you didn't even accept that I gave you that. You tried to push me back into 1960. No, I you didn't. tried to push me back into last week. No, I didn't. Okay, I do think... you accept that example that I... I love that he's saying 1960 is equivalent to last week. Just because a week's gone by, it's equivalent to 1960. That is an incredibly um, gaslighty way to look at things, isn't it, to be honest? I gave you. I understand completely the example you gave me. I think all racism is wrong. So I, just I feel that we've grown. I would like you to reflect. If I feel you, we've grown. If you, you feel we've if, grown. If, if, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, just to quickly interrupt, because I see people talking about flipping. I think Uche mentioned it and Good Robot mentioned it. You know what? You know, I've heard about Kanye's bipolar. This is very, very interesting. Somebody who said it. I forgot who said it. I must have heard it on a podcast on the YouTube video, but somebody else said it. It's not information for me. I don't know jack shit. But someone said that someone close to him said that Kanye was prescribed bipolar medicine, but supposedly bipolar medicine has a side effect of making you really bloated and making you really fat for some reason. I don't know why, or maybe it, help, it, let, it lets you retain water. I'm not sure what the reason was. And obviously Kanye is kind of insecure anyway about his body to the point where he got liposuction a few years ago. And he kind of, you know, he's obviously into clothes, so he wants to fit into certain things and he can't fit in them, which is why he hired a trainer to basically be training all year round and stuff, day, day in, day out and whatnot. Um, so someone said that he stopped taking his uh, bipolar medicine because it was making him fat. And he obviously went to look calling clothes and shit that's basically where he's at, at the moment that's the reason why which is pretty insane him just refusing to take the medicine because it's had side effects on making him a bit chunky come on man if you've now changed oh yeah big up donald dump thanks for hanging out my brother cheers
what you wanted to say originally. My question for you is, do you now regret saying I death gone free day. on Jewish update... people? Are you sorry you said that? No. I don't think it matters. <laughs> you should be. Absolutely not. You know... <laughs> it's like a child. No. <laughs> I will say I'm sorry for the people that I hurt with the DEF CON, the, the confusion that I call. I feel mm. like I call I cause hurt and confusion. And I'm sorry for the families of the people that had nothing to do with the the trauma that I had been through and that I use my platform where you say hurt people hurt people. <laughs> and I I was hurt. Yeah. It's nonsense. Who would have cunt he's basically giving you a reason why he's why he was a piece of shit. I was a piece of shit because I'm hurt and I'm going through what I'm going through. And I saw people, when I look at you every time, I see the people that I hate and you remind me of somebody that I didn't like. So I lashed out on you. Obviously, that makes sense, right? That's why I did it. Because you look like somebody I know. It's not my fault. I'm sorry if you were hurt. What kind of apology is that? <laughs> you said something which you've now wished you hadn't said and you've apologized. I actually think that says a lot about you. Right, that shows you've got that ability to be self-aware, to understand when you cross a line. I think someone like you, with all your energy and creativity and your passion, you're going to say stuff. The way that you talk constantly and in such an extraordinary manner, you're going to trip up. You're going to say things are wrong. <laughs> I think you're taking a piss there. You're going to say something and trip up, and you constantly manner. It kind of sounds like my school teacher. Like you're very energetic. You know, you have all these great ideas and you're buzzing around, but essentially what they want to get down to is that like, shut the fuck up. That's what they want to get down to. Shut the fuck up and listen more. But um, I find this fucking hilarious interaction, all of it. Way. I don't think there's anything wrong in when you do that, doing what you just did and saying, look, I'm sorry, I crossed the line, I apologize. I want to say that it's wrong to hold an apology hostage mm. and I got to let go of that and free, you know, free myself of the trauma and say, look, I'm just going to give it all up to God right now and say to those families that I hurt, you know, of I course. really want to give you guys a big hug. Of course, God. And I want to. Uh, I say I'm sorry for hurting you with my comments, and I want to word it in not a pres and not in like a political way, but in a presidential way, which means w w what I knew a president to be when I was growing up. What is this nigga talking about? Now you're talking about presidents? Fucking hell, man! Fucking. <laughs> Oh, he's absolutely amazing. I swear to God, he really is. But the full interview is meant to be dropping tomorrow um, or later today, I guess. If you watch this later, then you'll, you'll see it. But check it out if you're interested. Check it out if you're interested.